They say she likes to dance ballet Spinning and twirling every day Big bright smile and curly hair Hey everybody, this is John Clancy here. I thought I would ah, drop in and say welcome back to another Q&A video from John Clancy. This is Q&A video number 13. That's right. Haven't done one in a few months now, but you know, I'm back doing it. So let's get started. Question number one. What's your opinion on a steam train passes? It's a very interesting short film. Yeah, it's about a, a steam locomotive, a 1943 locomotive called 3801. Yeah. A steam train passes was actually set in the 1940s. Yeah, locomotive 3801 is an Australian based in uh, in New South Wales and in a steam train passes it mainly passes through the suburbs of Sydney. Yeah. Mm. But a steam train passes was made in 1974, which is actually 50 years ago. And the thing with a steam train passes is it's got no dialogue, no characters talking, but I still think personally it's a good sh it's a good short film. Oh, and I have done a cast video on it in case you've missed it. I've used Henry the Green Engine as 3801, Jimmy the Robot as the driver, the MC Bat Commander as the fireman, Uncle Jesse as the elderly passenger, Roscoe and Enos as the soldiers, Homer Simpson as the groom, Marge Simpson as the bride, Flint Lockwood as the signalman, Mr. Garrison as the station master, and the South Park characters as the passengers. And I know there's a few that I've missed, but don't worry. And I'm going to do that parody next year. All right, question number two. Am I going to do a parody on the Wiggles, the big red car from 1995? Well, I'm actually having a think about that, to be honest. But, you know, that short is a Wiggles Mint video that came out in 1995, which is, I know next year is going to be its 30th anniversary, but I still haven't thought about that. If I do it, though, I'm, act I'm either going to do the original big red car from 1995 or... I might do the 2006 remake, Here Comes the Big Red Car. Yeah, that's a remake of the Big Red Car, which a few differences. They um, they did a few clips. So the songs have actually been featured in the fifth series as well. Also, I'm making a decision if I should do V1 or V2 with the Aquabats. Yeah. But don't worry though, I am still going to think about that, yeah. Question number three. What parodies am I going to do in 2026? Well, I've got a few parodies for 2026, but I haven't got the entire lot listed down, but I am going to name the ones I have planned for 2026. There's Finding Emma, Finding Dory, Ash and Dawn, Romeo and Juliet, Thomas, Shrek, Thomas the Tank Engine and the Chamber of Secrets, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, Transformers, Revenge of the Diesel 10, Transformers, Revenge of the Fallen, The Land Between 4x4, John Clancy, Hotel Transylvania, John Clancy, The Swap V2, John Clancy, Toy Story of Terror, John Clancy, Mean Girls, John Clancy, and this is one I haven't announced yet, Thomas the Tank Engine and Christmas 2, Winnie the Pooh and Christmas 2. Um, that's going to be my Christmas parody for 2026, and I've made a cast video for it, I'll upload it real soon. Alright, question number four. Who's your favourite Great Western Engine in Thomas and Friends? It's Duck. He's the number one Great Western Engine. When he was introduced, he introduced himself as Montague, but... He calls him, people call him Duck, well even the engines call him Duck because of his, somehow he waddles, but he doesn't think he waddles, but he does like Duck better than Montague. When he was introduced, the fat controller asked Percy to show him around, and at the same time the big engines teased him a bit and blew smoke at him, and Percy and Duck decided to teach the engines a lesson by refusing to let them into their sheds and blocking them on the turntable, and... 
but you know, they soon got found out by the fat controller, you know, they soon got told off, but Duck said, Percy and I would be glad if you inform these engines that we only take orders from you. He agreed. Yeah. And then after Percy went to work with Thomas and Toby on the new harbour, Duck managed to work alone. He did so easily. And then when Diesel came along, things went downhill, you know, when he started telling lies. And then when Duck went to work with Edward, Duck had a chase with some trucks and crashed into a barber shop. Yeah. But the good thing was, though, Duck prevented a nasty accident with James and his coaches, which were right in front of him. Yeah. And then, but Duck got welcomed back after preventing the serious accident and after the fat controller sent Diesel packing. Yeah. Hmm. Well, Duck... And, and in the Railway series, Duck shares a book with Diesel called Duck and the Diesel Engine. Yeah. And the thing with Duck is, he only appears from seasons 2 to 7 in the old model series and then got dropped until the CGI. Yeah. But Duck is a great character. He's... He also... He always says, There are two ways of doing things. The Great Western Way... Or the wrong way. And I have used Duck a number of times in my parodies. I've used him as one of the elephants in my Jungle Book V2 parodies. Rolly in my 101 Dalmatians parody. Comet in my Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer parody. Ned in my South Park parody. Kirk Van Houten in my, South, in my Simpsons parody. Tex Dynaco in my Cars parodies, and himself in my Toy Story 3 parody. Oh, and Cookie in my Shrek Forever After parody. Yeah. And my second favourite Western engine is Oliver. When he was introduced, well, this was before actually, Douglas accused Edward of be lazing around in the sun while he was talking to Trevor. Yeah, but then Edward said, Trevor and I are old friends, and you and he have a lot in common too, and that is scrap. And so Douglas decided to travel to the scrapyard. Well, he was actually doing his work there, but then he heard Oliver and his brake van Toad trying to escape. Yeah, and so Douglas agreed to help. Yeah, before they got turned into scrap. Yeah. And Oliver was just perfect enough for Duck's branch line. And then, Oliver was bumping the truck so hard that they wanted Duck, or Donald, or Douglas. Yeah. And so the trucks pushed Oliver all the way backwards into the turntable well. But yeah, Oliver was very embarrassed. The trucks still continued to laugh. And, which in fact, the truck's leader, Scruffy, sang a song about Oliver, like how similar tune to how the, the trucks did to Diesel. Yeah. And Oliver, he was pulling the truck so hard that he accidentally ripped Scruffy in half. I have used Oliver a number of times as well. I've used him as one of the elephants in my Jungle Book V2 parody, Danny in my 101 Dalmatians parody, Sarge in my Cars parodies, Venusaur in my Pokemon parodies, Ned Flanders in my Simpsons parody, uh, himself in my Toy Story 3 parody. Yeah. Alright, question number five. When did you first watch Step Brothers? Well, I watched it only just last year in 2023. It's a really funny movie, yeah. It's about these two men named Brennan and Dale, aged 39 and 40, and they still live with their parents. And Brennan's mum, Nancy, married Dale's dad, Robert. And so, they started living together. Yeah. And Brennan and Dale, they started off as rivals. And, in fact, in when they were in bed, they would whisper insults to each other, and Dale has ordered Brennan not to touch his drum set. But Brennan still did anyway. And the two had a fight about it, which was very funny. Yeah. 
And so, but then they started to like each other when, when Brennan's brother Derek came to visit with his family. And so Dale punched Derek in the face. Yeah, and he fell from the treehouse. And so they became best friends. Yeah, that was until they, um, Nancy and Robert had a, a fight and they decided to get a divorce. Yeah. And so Brennan and Dale had another fight, but this time it was at night in the backyard. Dale started digging a hole thinking Brennan was dead, but Brennan was only playing dead. And so he tricked Dale into digging a hole and then he smashed him in the head with a shovel, but then Dale escaped from the hole. Yeah. And then Brennan and Dale, they moved out, went their separate ways and decided to become adults. And and they made their own karaoke company called Prestige Worldwide. But then Derek joined, Brennan joined Derek's helicopter leasing company called the Catalina Wine Mixer. Yeah. And then, but Derek fired Brennan. Uh, that was until he got up on stage and sang. And he also won the heart of his counsellor slash therapist, Denise, who he was constantly flirting with. But then she, she eventually fell in love with him. Yeah. And then, you know, they, they got back together, Nancy and Robert. You know, it was all part of their plan. Yeah. Yeah, Step Brothers is a good movie, and I am going to do a cast video on Step Brothers. I will announce it in the next question. All right, question number six. What's your cast going to be for Step Brothers, John Clancy? Well, I've got John Bennett as Brennan, uh, Luke Duke as Dale, Mr. Incredible as Robert, uh, Elastigirl slash Helen as Nancy, uh, Danny as Derek, Bess Denya as Alice, Oscar and Edwina as Tommy and Tiffany, and the list goes on. All right, question number seven. Who are your favourite twin engines in Thomas and Friends? My favourite twins are Donald and Douglas. They come all the way from Scotland to Sodor. Donald is number 9 and Douglas is number 10. Initially, the Fat Controller was going to send Douglas home and keep Donald, but it upset his arrangements when Donald slipped off the rails sorry, and then reversed into the signal box. But the Fat Controller was such a jerk, you know, it wasn't Donald's fault. But, even, but their problems were even worse because Douglas had to deal with a spiteful brake van who didn't like him. And so when the, when the brake van was coupled up to James's train, Douglas had to help him up the hill. But then the spiteful brake van was being so stubborn it, it braked in the middle of the hill. And so Douglas accidentally smashed the brake van and the fat controller was still struggling with his decision to send which engine home. But then, in the next episode, Donald and Douglas rescued Henry from the snow when he was stuck. And the other engines thought, it's not fair. They should both stay. But then, Percy decided to talk to the Fat Controller. He had a, a deputation, which was Donald and Douglas feared that they were going to be sent for scrap, but the Fat Controller had no intentions of doing that. He changed his mind and decided to keep both engines. And so their names were paid on them, there were no more mistakes, and then, you know, Donald and Douglas were there to stay. Yeah. And I have used Donald and Douglas five times in my parodies. I've used them as the Labrador in my 101 Dalmatians parody. They've shared the role Rusty and Dusty in my Cars parodies. Two of the Ogres in my Shrek Forever After parody, himself in my Toy Story 3 parody, sorry, I mean themselves, and the Circus Fireflies in my Bugs Life parody. And yet to come, they'll be playing as Fred and George in my Harry Potter parodies. And my second favourite twins are Bill and Ben. They're very mischievous tank engine twins. They both have four wheels, a, a tiny chimney and don't and a small squat cab. They take trucks of coal or china clay or whatever. One day, their trucks went missing, and their drivers soon knew that a diesel had stolen them. And so, they were right. It was take they were taken by 
a big diesel named Boko, who they referred to as a diesel, <laughs> because of a notice in the twin shed, coughs and sneezels spread diseases. Yeah. And so Bill and Ben played tricks on Boko without their names or numbers. By appear Bill appearing on one side and Ben appearing on the other. Until Ed would arrive to break up their fighting. And then Ed would explain that the diesel was a Metropolitan Vickers diesel electric type 2. And the twins soon realised how silly they'd been. But yeah, and but Boko apologised back for... For misunderstanding about the trucks. Yeah. And in the next episode, Boko was taking mainline trains along the mainline, which upset Gordon very much. And then that night when a lady in a green floppy hat on the station was saying goodbye to a friend, they waved, their hat waved, and then Bill and Ben played tricks on Gordon as well. When Gordon, and Gordon got sent to the branch line. Gord, they were joking that Gordon should be a load of scrap dumped in the sea. But then Boko also came and sent the twins away, threatening to take away their trucks, just like they, just like he did before. Yeah, Bill and Ben, they're very mischievous tank engines, and they play tricks and they use their identity, very identical to their advantage. So they can play tricks on people, so an engine, so they can't tell who's who. Yeah. And I've used Bill and Ben only twice in my parodies. I've used them as, them as Rod and Todd in my Simpsons movie parody and themselves, Edward and Molly's kids in my Percy Shrek parodies. Yeah. And my fa and my third favorite twins are Annie and Clarabelle. They they are twins. They're actually very identical. They they're Thomas's coaches. In fact, they were rewarded to Thomas after he saved James from a nasty accident with trucks. And Annie and Clarabel, they've been great friends and great coaches to Thomas. And they've helped him on his branch line. Annie only takes passengers. But Clarabel, she can take passengers, luggage, as well as her guard. But yeah, when Tom, but that, speaking of the guard, when Thomas had to wait for Henry's train... He was held up and that made him very impatient and then Thomas started so quickly he accidentally left the guard behind and Annie and Clarabelle were very upset without the guard so they they tried to tell Thomas but he wouldn't listen until he came to a signal but then the guard came running along the tracks as fast as he could yeah and Annie and Clarabelle they've been very loyal to Thomas They they've been his favourite coaches, and he loves them very much. Yeah. I've never used Annie and Clarabelle in my parodies, but I will be using them as Patty and Selma in my parody of The Simpsons, the TV show. I will be doing clips of them. And also, I will be using them in my Pokemon parody as the Blossom Twins, Bella and Belle. I'm going to do a clip of them. Yeah. Alright, question number eight. Oops. Who is your favourite female character in The Simpsons? It's Lisa Simpson. She is the middle child of The Simpsons and she plays the saxophone. She wears pearls around her neck, an orange dress and orange shoes as well. And Lisa is, like, you might say the smartest girl in the school. Yeah. And she and Bart occasionally have a, a fight and... She tries to be the most sensible in the family. Like, one example is when Homer had a barbecue and Lisa thought they were trying to rub it in her face. But no, Homer was just being nice. And that was when she became a vegetarian and refused to eat any animal. And she didn't want anyone to eat any meat either. But then she took it too far by stealing Homer's pork pig from the barbecue and then... It went missing, it went through some grimy, slimy water, and went flying through the air. And then Homer refused to speak to Lisa until she ran away, and, and then Apu and 
Paul McCartney and Linda McCartney said, you know, just taught her about, you know, eating meat, taught her a great lesson, and Lisa apologised for ruining Homer's barbecue. And yeah, she and Bart also fight each other, and like, one time at Thanksgiving, she made a centrepiece, and then Bart brought a turkey to the table. They both tried to make room for it, but then Bart accidentally threw Lisa's centerpiece into the fire pit and she they had a fight and she went upstairs to her room crying her eyes out and Marge and Bart, Marge and Homer, they punished Bart by sending him to his room and he could come down on the condition that he apologised to Lisa in front of everyone, but Bart refused because... He thought his parents were being totally unfair on him, and so he decided to run away and teach his family a lesson, and brought Santa's little helper with him. Yeah, and but then Bart eventually did return home at dark, and then she brought, he had all of his things on the roof, and then he talked to Lisa, and then he apologised to her, and she gave him a little kiss on the cheek as a thanks. Yeah, and soon they all had Thanksgiving dinner. And I have used Lisa a few times in my parodies. I've used her as Fern in my Charlotte's Web parody, uh, Sis Rabbit in my Robin Hood parody, herself, Jack's sister in my The Swap parody, herself, Kyle's sister in my South Park parody, herself, Wheelie's daughter in my Herbie Goes to Monte Carlo parody, and Dot in my Bugs Life parody. And yet to come, she'll be playing as Bonnie in my Pokemon parody, Alice in my Alice in Wonderland parody, Penny in my Mr. Peabody and Sherman parody, and Zuri in my Bunked parody. And there should be a few more as well. And my second favourite female character is Marge. Yeah, Marge is the mother of Bart, Lisa and Maggie, and the wife of Homer Simpson. Yeah, they've been married for quite a while, and in fact, they've had their wedding taped up in the movie. And Marge is very well-meaning. She's always very sensible, just like Lisa. Except on the occasion. But yeah, in in the 10th episode of The Simpsons, she was a bit crazy. She was just a bit airheaded. When um, Homer had a night out dancing with a female stripper, um, Bart took a photo and then posted it in the school. And, and the, the word soon spread around about the photo, and then Marge eventually discovered it in the gym and showed it to Homer. She was very upset. She thought Homer was cheating on him, but no, on her, but no. She's, he's not. And so Marge got very, very angry with him, kicking him out of the house, and so Homer decided to stay in Barney's motel. Yeah. And Homer... When he came home, Marge was still cross with him that he wanted Bart to witness Homer apologising to Princess Kashmir, that's the female stripper, for apparently treating women like an object. But Homer wasn't doing that. He was just dancing with her. You know, I mean, when in fact Marge has been going out with a few other men as well and just, you know, it's stupid. But then... Homer made a speech about how women are not objects, that they are our, our cousins, our mothers, our sisters, and everything else. Yeah. And then, you know, and that's when Marge forgave him and, and fell in love with him again. But Marge does mean well all the time, and I have used Marge a lot in my parodies. I've used her as Mrs. Arable in my Charlotte's Web parody, herself, Greg's mother in my Wiggles movie parody, Mother Rabbit in my Robin Hood parody, Linda Malloy in my Swap parody for photographs and flashbacks, Sheila Broflovsky in my South Park parody, Wheelie's Wife in my Herbie Goes to Monte Carlo parody, Coral in my Finding Nemo parody, and The Queen in my Bugs Life parody. And yet to come, she'll be playing as Jane Jetson in my Jetsons parody, Emily Hobbs in my Elf parody, Christina Ross in my Bunked parody, and Patty Peterson in my Mr. Peabody and Sherman parody. Alright, question number nine. 
Who are my favourite Wiggles? Well, of course, you know, Emma and Anthony are my favourite Wiggles, but I thought I'd give a rundown of my top 10 favourite Wiggles. There's Emma in first place, Anthony in second place, Greg in third place, then there's Murray, Jeff, Evie, Lockie, Simon, Lucia, and Sahai. They're my top 10 favourite Wiggles. All right, question number 10. When are you bringing Ash and Friends, Thomas and Friends, Hero of the Rails? I'm bringing them next year. I was initially going to do it this year for the 15th anniversary, but I ran out of time because, as you know, I went really slow with my last parody, which was Gordon Fully Loaded, Herbie Fully Loaded. Yeah, I had lots of personal things going on in life and, you know, been working a lot and hanging out with my friends, you know, just all the usual stuff, but I am going to bring it next year, in 2025. As a matter of fact, I am all I am going to bring the final season of Ash and Friends, Thomas and Friends, season 11, before that. Yeah. So that's when I'll do it. Alright, question number 11. What's your opinion on Edward and Henry being written out of Thomas the Tank Engine? Well, personally, I don't really like it, because Edward and Henry are... My favourite, some of my favourite characters in Thomas and Friends, and you know, Edward was actually the first character introduced in the series that was in the Railway series back in 1945. And Henry is well, Edward and Henry, along with Gordon, were part of the the first book. They were both they're all known as the three railway engines, and I don't think it's a great idea having Edward and Henry written off the show because you know. That's stupid. In the CGI, they were replaced by Rebecca and Nia. But I personally like those engines. Nia is very interesting, and Rebecca, I think, she makes a great girlfriend to Gordon, a great wife. In fact, I, I'm i sure you've seen me use them together in my parodies before, but, you know, I really wish... I really miss having Edward and Henry on the Steam team. You know, in fact... In all engines go, I've never heard them speak, but, you know, hopefully they do, even though I hate all engines go. Alright, question number 12. I know I've answered this before, but I'm going to answer it again because the answer will be different. What parodies are you going to do next year? Well, my parodies next year, I know I've said them before, but I have an update on them so far. The parodies I'm going to do next year are Thomas's Love Bug movie, Pooh's Heffalump movie, Characters 3, Cars 3, The Land Before Time 3, John Clancy, Thomas the Tank Engine and the Philosopher's Stone, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, A Steam Train Passes, John Clancy, The Jungle Book V3, John Clancy, Characters University, Monsters University, Ash and Friends, Thomas and Friends, Hero of the Rails, The Big Engine, The Love Bug, The Wiggles movie, V3, John Clancy, Light, Sally and the Lightning, Lady and the Tramp, and Pokemon Heroes, John Clancy. So those are the parodies I've got for next year. Alright, question number 13. I know I've answered this question before, but I'll answer it again. Who is your favourite character in the Dukes of Hazard? It's Bo Duke. I, I often thought he was the main character, but Luke is actually. Anyway, Bo is tall, handsome, good with the ladies. He's got blonde hair. It was very light in the first two seasons, but as from season three onwards, it darkened a little bit. Yeah. Bo drives the General Lee, and he and Luke are on probation for running illegal moonshine with their uncle Jesse. Yeah. And I don't need to go over what I've said about Bo and Luke, but I have used Bo a lot in my parodies. I've used him as Flash Gordon in my uh, Thomas Ted parody himself, Human Henry in my Percy 2, Shrek 2 parody, Birdie the Bus, Brock in my Pokemon parody, Gunner Malloy in my uh, The Swap parody, himself in my Toy Story 2 and 3 parody, Barney Rubble in my Flintstones parody, Slim in my Bugs Life parody, and Ray Payton Jr. in my Herbie Fully Loaded parody. And yet to come, he'll be playing as Zinni in my Dinosaur parody, and Buddy the Elf in my Elf parody, which I will do one Christmas. And I have, my second favourite is Luke, who is the actual main character, and Luke wears blue in the first two 
seasons, he wears a dark blue jacket. But in the season three, he wears a long sleeve uh, blue checkered shirt. Yeah. Luke is is also slightly shorter than Bo, and and also occasionally he'll drive the General Lee if if Bo can't drive or if Luke is driving the General Lee by himself. Which in one episode, when he he accidentally when he was filling the General Lee up with water, he he scooped the water into the tank and then he took a sip of water himself, put it to his mouth and then swallowed it and then. He started acting crazy and all abusive and just like he was on drugs. But, you know, he didn't realize there was a drug in there and it only lasted for a whole day, which which caused a lot of misery and a lot of, you know, chaos for the Dukes and their family and friends and even Roscoe and Boss, who who tried to frame Luke by filming him robbing Boss Hogg's bank. Yeah. But Luke does mean well, and like, in fact, he's by far the most mature in all the Dukes, and, um, you know, he's very good at giving advice, and very, he can be a bit, you know, a bit of a smart aleck at times, yeah, like in the Carnival of the Thrills, when um, he started mouthing off at Bo for trying his best at jumping the, the ramps, and also... One of the girls falling for Bo. Yeah, I think he was je jealous about that. But um, yeah. But anyway, most of the time he means well. And I have used Luke in my parodies as well. I've used him as himself, Human Gordon, in my Percy 2, Shrek 2 parody. Himself in my Toy Story 2 and 3 parodies. Himself, Barney's cousin in my Flintstones parody. Himself, Brock's cousin in my Pokemon parody. Mr. Ray in my Finding Nemo parody, Rod, whatever his name is, in my Cars 2 parody, himself, Slim's cousin in my Bugs Life parody, and himself, Ray Payton Jr.'s cousin, or Maggie's cousin as well, in my Herbie Fully Loan parody. And yet to come, I will be using him as Bagheera in my Jungle Book V3 parody, uh, himself, uh, Buddy the Elf's cousin in my uh, Elf parody, John Wiggle in my Hot Potato, The Story of the Wiggles parody, and Edward the Blue Engine in my V2 of Thomas and Friends, The Hero of the Rails, The Adventurer Begins, and Day of the Diesels. Hmm. So, guys, that's all the questions I have for today. I, um, I know I probably didn't get around to answering a few of yours, but don't worry, I am going to do more questions in another future Q&A video, which I will do at the end of this year, I promise. Yeah, I know I haven't done any for a while, but yeah, like I said before, I was busy. But anyway, guys, I want you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Watch my YouTube parodies. Watch special video number one, my second year anniversary video, special video number two, my friend's 18th and my friend's 19th birthday party, special video number three, the mystery bus tour, and special video number four my fifth year anniversary and hopefully in the future I'll do more special videos and guys please stay tuned for my next YouTube parody Percy's Great Adventure Barney's Great Adventure all right guys I want to thank you I want to thank you for tuning in this has been John Clancy I'll talk to you all later you all come back soon you hear me goodbye and I'm gone She's a dancing